Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles. In the past on this channel, I have covered several puzzles from the World Puzzle Federation in 2014 and some of the early 2015 puzzles, where I've picked one puzzle from the pack and cut featured that. I was looking at the puzzles from round three of 2015, and I couldn't pick a puzzle to do. They all looked so good. So what I've decided to try is to record all of the puzzles and release them as a series and see how that goes on the channel and see if people like it. So I'm starting with the first classic Sudoku in the series, which is just classic Sudoku 1. It's what it's called in the pack. Now, in the pack, there are 600 points worth of puzzles that you could solve in order to try and get as many points as possible in the competition. Now, I'm not going to try and solve these as a competition puzzle, but below I will provide a link to where you can download all of the puzzle packs from 2014 all the way up to 2025 that have been released. Um, and I will um, provide, of course, a link to this puzzle. Um, I'll also provide a link to a playlist where these puzzles will eventually all appear. Now, um, this puzzle is a 20 point puzzle, so it's designed to be something that can be solved pretty quickly. So this first video um, will uh, probably be a very, very short one. I don't know. I haven't tried to solve these puzzles yet. Um, but as we move through, some of these videos will get a little bit longer, I expect. So let's have a look at this puzzle. It's a classic Sudoku, so the rules are fairly simple. So we have normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. They're the rules of the puzzle. Before I get on to solving, I do just want to quickly mention that, as I said, this is a 20 point puzzle and it was provided that um, while these puzzles were all created by Indian setters, this was um, hosted by India or the, the competition was, this puzzle specifically was set by Swaroop Gugulam. Um, I've probably pronounced that correct, incorrectly and I apologize for that. So thank you Swaroop for this puzzle and I will try and provide that for as many of these going forward as I can. So let's restart uh, my timer to rest uh, restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Not that I'm going to worry about time. Let's give this a shot. So when solving a classic Sudoku, and I'm going to go through some basic techniques, the first thing you probably want to look for is digits that you can place quite quickly. So in this box, we have yet to place an eight, but these eights are looking into the box. So we can't put eight in any of those cells and these cells are already full. So we can place an eight. Um, maybe I can keep looking for more eights. Now I can see that this eight is eliminating eights from all of those, and this eight is eliminating eights from all of those. So that means eight in box five is restricted to only two cells. And when a digit is restricted to only two cells in a three by three region or a three by three box or a nine cell region often, um, then what you will often want to do is mark it with corner pencil marks. Um, this is called Snyder notation. And the reason you want to do that, hopefully it'll come up later is if you manage to place a digit in one of those two cells, then you immediately know that the other cell has to be the eight um, without having to discover it again, because we know that eight is in one of those two cells. So that's what corner marks are useful for in classic Sudoku. So we can see now that nine can't be in any of those or any of those. So we can pencil mark nine into one of those two cells. Now that means nine is pointing into this row and therefore nine can't go into any of these cells because if nine went into any of these cells, particularly these two cells, then that would mean that we couldn't place nine at all in box three. So nine has to be in one of these three cells. This nine is looking up and we can pencil mark nine into those two cells. Now. Do we have anything? Oh, we've got the same thing with eights happening down here. Eight can't go in any of those. So this becomes an eight, and then I can pencil mark eight in those two cells. Now we've got an interesting question we can ask ourselves, because eight can't go here because of this eight. Eight can't go in either of these two cells because of those two. So eight in this row has to go into box six, but these two eights are also looking down, which means this has to be the eight. Okay. So if I placed all of them, no, I've got eight down to just these left. And as soon as I place one of them, it's going to force the other one to be placed. So, ah, but one is now looking across and I can see that one can't go in any of those cells. This one is looking down seeing this. I could have placed this straight away, but I didn't. Now these two ones are looking up and eliminating ones from all of those. And one has to go in one of those two cells. 
except one in this box is going to do it because one can't go in any of those and these cells are filled. So one has to be in one of those two cells because of this one looking up. But because of the pointing ones here, one can't be here. Placing one here, which has eliminated one of the nine pencil corner pencil marks, making that a nine. Okay. Now one, uh, it's down to three options in this box. And on a classic Sudoku, I normally wouldn't pencil mark that. So the question now is, what am I looking for? So that's an interesting question. Ah, seven. Seven is also looking across. Can't go in any of those. And seven still needs to be placed. So this becomes the seven. So this is now a triple. We know what these three digits are. They're the only three digits that haven't been placed in the box. So these are two, six, and nine, which means that I can eliminate two or the two and the nine looking down make that the six. This is these aren't the six, and the nine looking down makes that the two and that the nine, giving us those three digits. Now I could keep looking for digits that are pointing, but what I have now is a row that is very, very full. Um, because I've already got six digits in this row. So what I can do is I can look at these three cells and see what these are and whether I've got a restriction. And I can immediately see I do because I haven't placed a three in this row yet, but these two threes are looking down. So I can't put three in either of those two cells. That becomes a three. And now I'm just down to two digits here, which happen to be four and five. Can't see how to resolve those yet, but it will come up. I'm hoping. Now, three and three are all looking into this box. So the question now becomes, where does three go? Because I can't put three there or there, and these cells are already full. This becomes the three. And now I've got two threes looking left into box four. Um, the boxes by the box numbers, by the way, we normally call them as box one, box two, box three, box four, box five, box six, box seven, box eight, and box nine. So box three is look uh, this three is looking across, and this three is looking across, and this three is looking up. So three must get placed here. And now I've got the same thing happening here. I've got six digits already placed. So the digits I haven't placed are two, six, and seven. So six can't go here. So this, well, actually, let's start with two because two can't go in any of those. So this is the two and this becomes a six, seven pair. And with the six and the seven, I've got a six looking across, making that the seven and that the six. Now, this is becoming a slower solve because I'm trying to explain what I'm seeing, but I think that's more important to my viewers. And if you're not needing the explanation, you're just solving the puzzle. One, two, three. These are four, five, and eight. Now we've already got the pencil mark saying that an eight can't be there, so I can remove that. But these five is looking across, taking five out of both of those. So this becomes the four because it can't be the five or the eight. This becomes the four, which takes four out of both of those. And I, I could have just written these in, but I wanted to demonstrate that now these are all even more restricted. This has to be the eight, and now this can't be the eight. So what's left? It has to be the five. The eight looks across saying, that's not the eight, that's the eight, and these pencil marks have resolved. Now, I can see row four is very restricted, only able to be one, two, and nine. Well, I can't put nine in either of those cells. There's already a nine in the box. So this becomes the nine, and this becomes a one, two. Now, I can't see how to resolve the one, two, but where my attention is drawn is into box six, where I've only got three digits to place, one of which is a two, and I can't put two into either of those cells. So that becomes the two and these become a one and a four and the one is looking across making that the four and that the one. Now these become way more restricted. Now there's four digits to place in the box but each row only needs two. So these two digits must be four and six. So these two digits now can't be one, two, three, four. They can be five, can't be six. So these become five and seven. Now I'm not seeing how to resolve those yet but again it'll come up. I've got the same thing happening here. While there's four digits that I could uh, haven't placed in box one, if I look at column one, I'm only missing two, which are three and five. And I've got a three looking across, making that the five and that the three. Now in this box, I'm only missing two digits, which seem to be four and seven. 
again, I can't see how to resolve those yet. But this is now a triple because I've got three digits in, I've got six digits placed. So I haven't placed two, six, and seven. Now the six and seven is looking up, making that the two, which means those aren't the two. The two makes that the one and that the two. Now that's kind of useful, but where I'm seeing is I can either look at the triple in column four or the triple in box two. I'm going to look at the triple in box two because Actually, I don't even need to do that. Three and three means I can't put three into any of those cells. So this becomes the three, and this is actually a pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are four and five. Now, this is telling me, because I don't can't eliminate the four or the five in this column, but I've only got two empty cells, this more so must be a four, five, and the four makes this the five, this the four, this the five, the four is now looking left, making that the seven and that the four, and this is collapsing pretty quickly. I expected it would as a 20 point puzzle, but I really did want to use this to showcase everything. So you'll notice that all I'm missing now is I haven't placed a six in this row and I've already got pencil mark nines. So these become six, nine, but the six is looking up, making that the nine and that the six. This is now a triple, which is one, five, seven, and there's a one and the seven in the column. So this becomes the five. This is the one, seven. The one is looking up, making that the seven and that the one. The four here is looking down, making that the five and that the four. I told you that would resolve at some point. I'm only missing a single digit in this column. Some people call this an eye wing. One, two, three, four, five. I haven't placed a six because I've got a seven, eight, nine. So that must be the six. Now, again, I'm just missing pairs in these columns. These are, I think it's two and four. The four is looking across, making that the two and that the four. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six and eight. So these are seven and nine. The seven is looking across, making that the nine and that the seven. In this row, I haven't placed a two or a three. The two is looking down, making that the three and that the two. In this box, I haven't placed a one or a nine. The one is looking down. I also could use the nine looking down, but doesn't matter which one I use to resolve them. Then the four is looking up, making that the six and that the four. The six is looking up, making that the seven and that the six. The seven is looking down, making that the five and that the seven. And that is the correct solution to the puzzle. Now, I did like this puzzle. Now, as I said, we're starting gently because I'm starting with the 20 point puzzle because that's the way they were presented in the pack. The puzzles in the pack do go up to a puzzle's worth 100 points and the first six puzzles will be classic Sudoku, um, including one that I think is worth 60 points. I'll have to, we'll get, we'll find out when we get to it. So it'll be significantly trickier than this. And then so we'll go on to variant Sudoku Well, there'll be much more different logic to, yeah, <laughs> much different logic to, different logic to investigate. So hopefully you're looking forward to those. So I'm not sure how I'm going to release these yet. I'm just recording them and then I'll figure out those plans, but hopefully you'll enjoy the puzzles. Thanks everyone for watching. And as always, good luck with your solving.